Try to picture this if you can. Are you ready? This will be a MOBA, uh, which won't focus on PvP. It has teams playing against each other. It has elements of a roguelike, and it wants its players to win without other players losing. If you're asking what the fuck this is, you are like me. Let's take a closer look, shall we? So I was going to bed last night when a friend shared with me an article uh, about this upcoming game currently in development and honestly it caught my attention but for some reasons. So I gathered here for you guys a few articles, quotes, in-game screenshots, videos to paint a better picture of what we currently know. So let's start by making a cheat sheet of all the things that we know about the game right now. The game is called Evercore Heroes. Uh, previously it was known by its codename Project B back in 2020. It's been in development for almost three years by Bella Game Studio, which was founded in Dublin by ex-Riot employees, uh, Riot Games, the company that made League of Legends. They even took the idea from Riot to call themselves with an S in games without having more than one. In fact, they have zero right now. I love you! Liar! Now, why is this game interesting for me? Well, they are trying to create a new genre of games called MOCO, which stands for Multiplayer Online Cooperative. Uh, not the best name, considering that MOCO means booger in Spanish. The idea behind this, according to Lisa Newton-George, who is an ex-Riot employee and now co-founder of Pella Games, is, and I quote, Our goal is to reimagine what multiplayer cooperative gaming looks like with a player first mentality in everything we do. We want to create a new genre of games that will enable us to unite both PvP and PvE players from all over the world. The difficulty with all cooperative titles is designed in a way that encourages, rather than forces, players to work together. We can build this type of skill-based gameplay, but by focusing more on co-op than direct competition, it will lead to players playing and winning more together." End quote. So from what I've seen, they have taken basic structure of a MOBA like Dota or League of Legends and they restricted the interactions between you and the anime team and focuses more on the cooperation within yours. Again, this is less PvP and more PvE. I can imagine for example a custom game in League of Legends where the map is split in half so you can attack direct players from the other team you have to work together within your team to kill mobs from the jungle, level up, gather some items, and then you have to kill the Nashor in order to win the game. Now, imagine a complete new game designing around this idea of a custom map. Well, that's basically what Evercore Heroes looks like. Obviously, I could be wrong. Only time will tell. What we do know right now is going to be a 4v4v4v4 game. So that means you'll be playing with three teammates against other three teams, uh, 16 players each game. You can't interact directly with the other team. They said each team will be placed in its own instance, but there are some elements of PvP here and there. For example, there are objectives which grant powerful buff, but only one team can claim it. So this means you will be racing to be first. Also, every team has an Evercore, which is like a Nexus from League of Legends. Monsters can be empowered by the enemy team with Gothic Loom, which is a resource in-game. So they can destroy the Evercore and you will be knocked out of the game immediately, so you need to protect it. Basically, you need to work together in order to be more efficient, while at the same time being a pain in the ass for the other teams. All heroes start at level 1 somewhere in the map and they need to complete objectives and find monsters in order to become stronger and gain resources to finally be able to gain access to the boss domain. Once the barrier of the boss is broken, all teams simultaneously will face the boss in a multi-phase fight where you have to overcome skill-based challenges in order to win the match. When that final boss is dead, the game is over. So now let's take a look at the game's trailer and see some in-game screenshots in order to analyze further details. Here we go. Breath, open your 
The world has broken down. Firefly concept. Basically, high mobility DPS. That's that's a bit character of all. <laughs> it reminds me of Nanachi from Made in Abyss, which definitely is a healer. Pretty good. I don't know if you guys spot that. Where is it? Not here. Here. You can see the other team <laughs> rushing for the boss here. Now, the trailer was okay. Uh, I liked some of the designs, especially the healer, which remind me of Made in Abyss. I fucking love that show, but I have to be honest, I don't get excited too much with CGI trailers uh, without seeing gameplay first. It's like someone came up to you and they say, oh, you know, this game is it's it's going to blow your mind. It's called football. And I have to show you a trailer. Uh, here, take a look. And they show you someone holding a football ball huh? and you just do like this. The guy is putting the trainers on, the t-shirt, he's going out to the match, and that's all you see. So you basically don't know what to expect of the game. <laughs> you know nothing. You just saw something pretty. The best way for me, if I were a developer, which I'm not, would be to show a nice edited gameplay. We have millions of them in YouTube uh, where you see a game that is terrible, so gas. But you see a gameplay perfectly edited with good music on the background and it's insane and you want to play that fucking awful game. And then uh, you complement it with a CGI trailer just before release to hype people up. I think that's the better way to do it. Now let's see some real in-game screenshots. Here we have the typical MOBA interface. Uh, we are here at the bottom with five skills, one passive and the QWER with the last one being the ultimate, probably. Then there are stats like physical damage, magic damage, crit chance, resistance, and so on. Or teammates, icons with their life and mana, and the map with its objectives. On the upper left, we have each team ever called level and HP. We already know that the teams are divided into four. We have team dart, shield, sword, and spear, each designed with a different color. Then we have gold, a heart, which maybe is loom, and a timer that are located at the top right corner. I'm not sure what the meter in the middle means. Uh, we'll see in the future when more systems like search are explained. You can see the Evercore in this one, for example. But the most important thing here is the map at the bottom right. Here is when I think some of the roguelike randomness comes to play. If you pay close attention to the layout of the map, the location of the objectives change from game to game. This one, for example, 
and this one, completely different. Some objectives give you gold, other powerful shards, HP and search, each with a different shape and color. Here we also have the shop. And these slots, I thought at first could be for items, but you can see that they resemble more of like buffs, more than actual items. And finally, we have an article from 2019 from Game Industry that I'm taking the time to highlight a bunch of stuff. So we are going to take a look at that now. The three co-founders are CEO Travis George, who spent close to a decade as a product lead at Riot Games, director of Inside Lisa Newton-George, a former University of California lecturer and Riot Games research, and game designer Brian Kaiser, who spent 11 years as a game and narrative designer. Nothing to add here. Bella Games plans to focus solely on multiplayer games, partly because this appeals to the type of audience the studio wants to research, but also because it's what we love and where we can do something different, according to George. Many of us have deep experience developing multiplayer games and we get why players love to play them, he continued. It comes down to three main things, players wanting to play together, aspiring to master skills, and loving the feeling of achieving something meaningful. Everyone on the team is experienced, but we want to avoid falling into the trap of either only making decisions based on our own instincts, or relying too much on one source of feedback, such as Twitter. Too late in development, she says. I think that balance is a good idea. Then it goes on. I will be focused on understanding why our audience of players play their favorite games. I will then expand my research in order to understand how a specific aspect of our game are reasoning or not and why. Building that deep relationship with our players is essential to making our community and game a success. Then she says, we love competitive games and many of us design it and evolve them. Those certainly can be intense with co-op moments here and there, but there's also a lot of downsides. Once the game is only about winning, then someone has to lose. In a win-lose game, the actual gameplay design can contribute to stress and player toxicity in the community. It's true that losing is not fun and can make people more toxic in certain cases, but that has more to do with the actual person who is playing and not the game itself. I've seen people raging over Minesweeper for fuck's sakes. Is that supposed to be part of the fun? Because let me tell you something, Minesweeper, it's not fun! If you are molding in a video game because you lose a match, Probably the game is just the fuse and not the bomb. Obviously there are systems within a game that can be implemented to regular players' behavior a little bit, uh, like rewarding or punishing players based on their playstyle and communications within their team. Saying that it's impossible to do is just not true. We all know certain games are more toxic than others and there are a lot of reasons for that. If you're a Twitch streamer, for example, and your chat is super toxic, that's because one, you are toxic yourself and that attracts that kind of people. Or number two, you are allowing that to happen either by negligence or benefit. Having said that, you can't have a toxicity free game. That exceeds your control and you need to be aware of that. Secondly, every game has a win-lose condition. If the game doesn't state it, the players will create their own. I want to kill this boss faster, I want to flawlessly execute the combo, I want to complete more than two objectives, and so on. Players will always create their win condition. They try to maximize their fun all the time. Then continuing with the article, our idea is to say to players that you must meet the base conditions for winning, but also offers ways to win more. For instance, if you have to survive in a session until the end, that's the base win condition but you can then earn extra rewards by surviving or performing more actions skillfully or killing extra enemies. With this approach, we allow players to push themselves individually to the benefit of the whole team. We already have games with systems like this, uh, which I call soft winning or soft losing. In TFT, for example, the winning condition will be placing first, but you can also play second, third, or even fourth and still gain some LP and progress. In a certain way, it's a soft winning system. But people's minds are complicated. Imagine this. You gain 10 points by placing first, 7 by placing second, 4 by placing third, and 2 by placing fourth. If you end up fourth 10 times in a row, even if you progress, will you feel like winning? Or in this case, soft winning? I will leave this question open for you to decide. 
Additionally, playing with strangers can sometimes increase negative interactions on teams, especially if you have poor communication systems. We are working on innovating new systems that remove these barriers. Better communication means better cooperation. Oh, my sweet summer child. I would say that better communication in terms of systems means more ways to engage with people. That is mostly a good thing and should be pursued, but it does not mean better cooperation. It just means that people that want to cooperate will be more efficient. The people who want to troll or have fun in other ways, let's say, will also be more efficient. Like the last system Glee of Legends implemented years ago with pings. You can call an enemy missing for your team in order to help them, but at the same time, you can spam ping the corpse of your teammates when they fucked up. And then the last part of the article that caught my attention, there's promise in finding new ways of performing teams online. Observing that most multiplayer games matchmaking systems are based primarily on a simple numerical rating to represent their skills, but ability is just one factor. And in this case, this is like capitalism. You may like it or not, but it's the best system we have invented yet. It's true that ELO and MMR are not perfect systems at all. Everyone who have played competitive games before know this. A player's skill is based on a lot of factors. Word placement, which means vision, map awareness, decision making, mechanical skills, game knowledge, teamwork, and so on. But you can also state that the better you are controlling these variables, the better your average placement will be. Maybe you are a god at map awareness or even decision making. But your mechanical skills suck stick. So your final score will be a 6 and you will say, oh, but I'm the best map awareness in the world and I can see everything and my teammates, blah, 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 blah. And I will tell you, yes, but your mechanical skills are a minus 14. You suck, dick. Maybe the score is not wrong. Maybe you need to improve the things you lack. So I'm just curious what kind of systems this game is going to finally end up using. That's all we have right now. I'm super excited uh, to see where this is going and we probably will have more information in the next couple of weeks. I think there's some alpha testing going on this weekend, I'm not sure. But if you want to try and get an invite to the alpha, there is a sign up here at the homepage of the WhatsApp. It's called evercoreheroes.com. Here where it says register, you just enter your email and that's it. They will probably send you an email whenever you gain access. I don't know if they're going to send us a key or something. And that will be all for today. Have a great one. Un abrazo. Like this video, leave a comment, or give me all your sweet, sweet money. Yay! Nos vemos la próxima. Abrazos. I'm more.